Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. We're here on the avenue in Trinidad and Tobago at Smokey and Bunty's. Guys, you know, what a game today. Two games. Um, I'm still recovering, but we're going to talk about it in order. James, it's been great. Kevin, welcome back. We're going to have your analysis today. So the first game we're going to talk about is Netherlands versus the US men's national team, USA, whatever you want to call them. Unfortunately, they fell 3-1 to Van Gaal and his men. Uh, let's do our initial reactions, James. Initial thoughts? Very, very entertaining game, just like both games today. Um, obviously, the American team will be bitterly disappointed. They talked a big game, their supporters talked a big game, their media talked a big game, but they were just not able to come up with against a, a very resolute Dutch team who, to me, started to show a little bit of, I won't say total football, but complete football maybe, you know? One of the goals they got, 21 passes leading up to that goal. Fantastic, a great goal by Depay. Blind scored and Dumfries and I thought Dumfries was absolutely fantastic. So, wonderful game, wonderful result from them and I'm very, very happy how it ended up. Yes, yes, you know, Kevin, you know, we always talk about tactics and possession and so on. So let's take a quick look. Obviously, 17 shots for the US versus 11. Uh, eight on target for the US. Six, you know, for the Dutch. Um, Van Gaal, we know, we spoke about his style of football before. Uh, what do you think about the... Um, let's go to the US first. What do you think about Greg Berhalter's approach to this game? Um, I, I don't really have a problem with his approach to the game, really. But what, what I really found um, interesting is a fourth different number nine was played in the, in the fourth game. Yeah. So clearly, his problem were not tactically his problem, was just a man up front. And, um, you know, I think the experience that Louis Van Hal has, he would have seen that hmm. and smelled a little bit of blood. Yeah. Because, you know, he's a wily old manager, Louis, and a manager that I admire a lot. Yes. And, um, I said it before the game that I think the coaches would win or lose the match and I think it, it ended like that. I think um, Mourinho, another coach that I admire, uses the term football heritage Yeah. and it can't be bought, it can't be created, it, it has to be earned. And I, I think no matter how much money the US put in, we know they put in a lot every year and they try very hard. I think it will be a good few years before we could see them actually dominating world football. But they will get there. I, yeah. I, I don't have any doubt about that. But today, I think football heritage is just shone true. Yes, yes. And you know, obviously, you know, speaking about that, that's kind of leading to my next question. The US have invested heavily into their football. They have a lot of criticism from a lot of people, a lot of positives. They're very hard on themselves. They want to prove themselves at the world stage. They have been kind of knocking on the door a little bit. You know, the last couple of World Cups, they did okay. Because for a long time, they were kind of the whipping boys. Not so much anymore. And if you look at their squad, they obviously, their, their program seems to be working because they have a lot of players that are playing in top teams and they did a, they had an admirable performance in this World Cup. James, do you think this is a sign of things to come in the next World Cup maybe? Definitely. I think from most of the CONCACAF teams, I mean America, Canada, but when you look through both of their squads, they have players who are, I mean they're not necessarily young as in 16, but they're 19, 20, 21, 22, so they, they have a, quite a few World Cups to go. And especially with that big one, obviously, in 2026, they'll be looking forward to coming in and really showing what they can do in that one. Guys like, obviously, Weir, Pulisic, McKenney, Adams. I mean, I think, honestly, I thought their goalkeeper didn't show us what he has done in previous games. was a little disappointing, but um, I think Bert Halter may get another chance. We'll see, because usually after a tournament like this, you know, they tend to relieve coaches of their duty. Yeah. He's done pretty well. I mean, I have to say he's got some good results. But at the end of the day, it's a building process. And this is a team that they promise a lot. As I say, with the, the media you know, outlets say that how good this team was. But they've just not lived up to it. But I think, as I say, they have a big future, as does the Canadian team as well. Yes, yes. You know, Kevin, your thoughts? Well, I think what we saw again is another um, efficient performance from, from Holland or the Netherlands, as they call them now. Um, and that's a staple of Louis Van Hal. You know, he's, he's a guy, he doesn't create much chances, but if you look, six shots on target, three goals. Yeah. So, you know, he's a very efficient coach. And um, I think, you know, once again, um, USA also showed, apart from the striker problem, they struggle to break down Iran. Mm. And Netherlands has shown this tournament that they are, they are very sturdy, very compact, very organized, and they struggle again. Yeah. Um, I think the goal was a, a fortuitous one. Mm -hmm. I think he miss kicks it in the end, and yeah. it just go, goes over the line for right. the US. Um, I thought that I was a bit disappointed with their back post defending. I think the first two goals, 
were carbon copies of each other. Yeah. Um, I think another Louis Van Hal masterclass was Dumfries wasn't um, hogging the line. Yeah. He was a little bit narrower, still wide, but a little bit narrower. So more of a threat going forward. And you know, the pullback cross to first of all um, Memphis and then Daily Blind is carbon copies of each other. And then, of course, he got the goal. Yeah. Another blind side run, another late arrival into the box. A lot narrower than they, than they would have anticipated. Correct. And he got the goal. So I think the coach Van Hal again out, out taught Greg Badhalter because Greg would, of course, say, well, defend wide areas for, for Dumfries. But yeah. he, he had Dumfries a little bit inside. And, and I think that's the. The beauty of, of Louis Van Hal that people don't give him credit for. Mm. He always seems to have an ace up his sleeve. And I spoke about it um, in the group stage that we didn't see one of James' uh, favorite players, um, Javier Simmons. Mm. We saw him for 12 minutes today. And I said that was another ace up his sleeve. He didn't want the world to see what Xavier could do. Yep. And, and now, of course, he's, he's bringing him in, get, get him accustomed to the pace of the game. And I think we're going to see him come on a lot earlier or start in the, in the quarterfinals against Argentina. And right. he looked very bright when he came on. He had a little back heel, a few little touches, some nice little interchange of play. And, you know, that's things to come, as Kev said. But I was thinking to the American goal, they could try that a hundred times and that goal would never come off the way it went in. You know, as I say, some would say it's a fluke, you know, the way it bounces up and over the goalkeeper. But um, in football, you'll take it. But yeah. I yeah. thought, you have to say, Dumfries was man of the match, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, definitely. And you make you unlucky, you know, we always say that. So, yes, yes. You know, Wright came in and I'm not a big fan of Wright. I thought maybe they could have brought in somebody else, but he was positive. I think he had a shot um, when, he, when he, well, the poor back pass mm. and he just couldn't squeeze it in. And then, of course, he scored the goal. So sometimes they make you unlock and I think you taught me that, James. So. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, so interesting. Once again, these guys seem to be reading my mind with the script. I was going to talk about Van Gaal's tactics and how he keeps things tight at the back. However, there are moments in the game that you could plan, you could strategize, and then you have goals like that. And there's also another situation coming up, we'll talk about that as well. You have your players lined up, you have your three at the back and so on, and then you get a goal like this. It shows you that even though you have a good system and you know you have players that are prepared, you can still concede a free goal and you, as you said, make your own luck. Sometimes yeah. you take a chance, you know, you don't, you don't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket or whatever phrase you want to use. And you know, they got that goal, so you know, uh, before we, we head into the other game, we have a lot of things to talk about. We'll try to summarize this a lot, but um, you know, we'll have one more thing we'll add to this game. Do you think the Netherlands, with this setup, can go really far in this tournament? I think they can. I think they're going from strength to strength. I think, as I said at the start, they're very resolute. They're pretty solid. I think I've been very surprised with Norpit, the goalkeeper. He's growing strength to strength. I wasn't convinced in the first game, but he spreads himself well. He he controls the game. He's a big boy as well. I think he's six foot eight. So he's came in and he's done well. So I think they can. I mean, I think obviously we'll talk about who they're going to play at the end. But um, I think this is a Dutch team that if they can keep playing that as close to total football as we you know, as we talked about at the start, yep. they have a very good chance. Yes, yes. Kevin, any final thoughts? Uh, well, um, I agree that they have a chance. I mean, how far they go? May come down to some luck. We don't. We don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought you said we make your own luck. No. But I don't yeah. know. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I will add is, um, Javier Simmons, Yakpo, and Memphis. That's a fearsome front tree. Yes. So put with a sturdy defense and a, a compact midfield. I think they, they they can give a lot of trouble. And um, I think again, once you could keep the lit on the bench and the ride, <laughs> I think that you have a very powerful defense. Um, yes. But I think a lot of it has to do with the tactics because he, he, he attacks so much with his wing backs. He wants capable defenders in wide areas as well. And I think one of the lit troubles are uh, one on one defending. So, you yep. know, somebody has to cover the wing back when he, when he goes up. So that's why, you know, Timber and Ake are very comfortable playing in the wing back positions or yep. um, full back positions. Yeah. So, you know, they cover that. And I think that's what Van Hal does well. He, he has cover strategies for, for everything. So, yes. when you think you have him, you don't quite have him, so we'll see. Yes, and it's interesting you brought up those two centre backs because both centre backs in Syria have been struggling a little bit for both Juventus and uh, Inter Milan. Um, I think Delit is also on the way out, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Syria fans, you can let me know. But uh, it's in you made a very good point to keep those two guys out of the team. Now, Delict, I can understand he hasn't had that, you know, impact that Juventus, Juventus that people thought he would have had. A lot of people thought he would have been a natural fit, and obviously showing on the national team that you know he's not breaking in and defry from Inter Milan. He, you know he's good but this season he hasn't been great so you know that shows you how van gaal did his research and has built a really strong team and you know that national pride aspect i think as well with van dyke surrounded by those two guys really makes them a formidable defense 
But what I would say, um, as me and James were talking before the game, um, Van Hal uh, has a little, a little bit of guts, you know, because he gave he the does. keeper his debut in the first game of the World Cup. That that takes a lot of, well, not the word I want to use, but we'll use guts. <laughs> and um, I think, you know, it, he's one of the coaches we see and not is not picking a team based on name yeah. based on reputation he's picking a team based on his system based on his belief and i think that's why they're doing so well a lot of coaches i, I seem um I, I seem to think that they they're picking game, they're picking players based on reputation and and not really looking at the true form and um, when we get into the next game we'll talk a little more about that so yes 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 we have a lot to talk about but before we speak about the other game we're going to have a kind message from the folks that are sponsoring us the lovely folks of biotech let's hear what they have to say biotech plus is internationally certified for all clinical disinfection and sterilization all infectious disease control and surgical instruments and we're back folks so obviously uh, we have a lot of things to do that's our favorite word we're gonna have fun with it obviously so Argentina took on Netherlands but before we start up with that you know, I just want to do a quick mention, but this watch I have on here, if you haven't noticed, it's, you know, the blue and white of Argentina, folks. You know, it's a lovely uh, thing to have during the World Cup. So to be honest with you guys, we'll have, oh, there's a lovely image there, or direct, well done, director, of the watch there. So there's a lot of those items and more, and we'll put some information in the description below where you can find that. So we'll have a little bit more about that as we go along in the show. We'll have a little video. We'll pop up, but we're going to head straight into the game, folks. So Argentina took on Australia. It's a game that I sat in a corner. You got it right this time, Andre, because you just said previously Argentina against Holland. But there oh, you go. Oh my God! Ahead. Thinking ahead. I'm still recovering. I'm still recovering. I'm still recovering. You know, like Argentina took on Australia. I'm getting ahead of myself. It was a game that you know started off what looked kind of cagey at first. Then Argentina got those goals, and it looked like they were cruising for a little while. And then Australia got that goal, the deflected goal, and then things looked really nervous. Martinez threw away a bunch of chances. Australia had some chances in the end. It was way closer than people would have liked in the end. James, and then we had to Kevin. What are your initial thoughts on this game? Well, this was a very interesting game because um, the way Australia started the game surprised me because we've seen in the past they were a workman-like team. They grinded out results, so to speak, but they played a very high-pressing game early on. They had a high block. You know, their defence was very high. Myself and Kevin were talking about this. And they actually took the game to Argentina. Now, you would think as a team that's a so-called smaller team, doing that is very dangerous but it didn't backfire at least till I think the the 34th minute really so they, they played they played a very even game up until then and then obviously the little magician pops up and um, scores a very good goal but it was a very interesting game a very entertaining game and especially down to the last minutes and again that's what we want in this World Cup yes yes you know I mean we, we know there's a tactical battle going off going on off the field but on the field there's grit there's determination there's passion there's flair and as I say, it's wonderful as a neutral fan. Yes, yes. Kevin? Well, I uh, agree with James. You know, I thought that they would have been a little, a little more cagey, um, organized, compact, mid-block, deep block. But I think they took a page out of Saudi Arabia and decided, listen, let's go for it. Uh, we have nothing to lose. And they were. it was a pretty even game. I think after the first half an hour, Australia actually had the only shot on target. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were, they were, everything was going to plan. But again, we talk about top players punishing teams and... You know, the, the left-back, Becic, um, had one lapse. He had a little tussle with Messi. I think it kind of messed with his head because, you know, Messi kind of retaliated a bit. Yeah. And then he, he fouled um, Otamendi, I think it was, mm. in an area where Otamendi was not in, in a dangerous position. Yeah. And the, the goal came from that free kick, you know, and that's what top players do. They, they seize upon the opportunities that you give them, as little as, as it is. Um, but I thought Australia came out second half. Um, I, I think the coach would have just about taking out one nil going into halftime uh, seeing as Argentina is playing yeah. so that I think gave them a little bit of belief um, this halftime talk obviously they were out with a little more aggression mm. a little more uh, bite about them mm. uh, again fortuitous goal some say because I think it was given as our own goal in the end but you make your own luck because uh, Goodwin was pretty far out and he just decided you know the more malicious through it and it worked out yeah um, Australia well, they, they show caution to the win in Premier League for the last 15 minutes. And, you know, James, um, any additional comments? Well, I was just thinking there, obviously the goal that um, Argentina got the second one was a little bit of a, a mistake from, um, from Ryan. You know, it was the, the pass back. He, he wasn't able to get it under control. And then he, he kind of was robbed with the ball and, you know, the goal went in. But um, 
it, it was one that right down to the end, if it wasn't for that probably that mistake, it would have been a lot closer. And then there was a chance at the end, I think, um, I can't remember the guy's name again. He came on the substitute you told me about. Yeah. He had that chance, but Martinez was able to save it. But it was a very entertaining game again. And yeah. again, that is what we want. I mean, we saw, for example, Behitch, I think it was the, the fullback for um, Australia, dancing around. I mean, again, very much Messi like. Yeah. I mean, if he, he was in such a, a bright yellow shirt, some may have said it was Pele, you know, dancing yeah. there. And, <laughs> and as we're talking about Pele, obviously, we're hearing some bad reports that, you know, he's in a bad way. So our thoughts go out to the family there, you know. He's yeah. obviously a legend in the game, and we don't like to see them like that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, obviously, you know, the game, we'll talk about the goal scorers, you know, obviously it was Leo Messi, Julian Alvarez and Enzo Fernandez, that shot that was deflected into the goal. So at that point in time, guys, it's interesting to hear your interpretation. So at that point in time, it looked, it appeared as if Argentina were in control. Then they got that goal. But also Lotaro Martinez had several chances that could have buried the game as well. And he scoffed them pretty much. Do you think if those goals were scored, that the game would have been so nervy for Argentina, especially if he got the third one? Well, I mean, me and Kev spoke about this. I mean, it was one of those games that could either go one way or the other. I mean, it was, in one sense, it could have went a you know, three, four, five nil ga game, you know. But I think he didn't have the best of games, you mm -hmm. know. But I think we talk about luck. We talk about um, that spirit, that passion of the Australian team. And I think that's what drew them through this game, you know. Yeah. And it made the game exciting. And as I say, as a fan, we want that. But... Um, Martinez I will be very disappointed and there's a reason why Alvarez is keeping him out of the team. Correct. And we can see it right there. Yeah, I would say um, you know, um the Argentine the Argentine coach um finally forgot name, forgot reputation, and I think he picked the the, the proper person up top. Um, you know, if you squint your eyes a bit, you might think you're you're looking at Aguero <laughs> when Alvarez, you know, has the ball, a very, very uh fast player, skillful, could mm. could find the goal. Um I would say though that I think just that lack of a bit of magic that technical ability kind of cost australia in the end we saw um obviously obviously the fullback had a great run but sure the game we saw them trying to match the argentines with some flair and they were losing the ball yeah and you know i think a more technically gifted player all all credit and all respect to, to mabel a technically gifted player they will put that put that away probably with a cheekier finish yeah maybe another keeper maybe not maybe high and hard mm. but you know he they just lack that bit of quality and we could use the word football heritage again mm. we know argentina is a team with a lot of history in this tournament a lot of history in football produce so much great players campers maradona messi de maria so maybe again just as with the us game maybe heritage just about so argentina too and they could go from shank to shank from this um, but it'll be a great game to watch the next game but speaking yes, of, speaking of mabel though you, sp you touched on there i mean he's a guy that's going to be a great player for australia in the future i mean as i say he could have had a bit more composure i think it just came so quickly to him but when you're coming up against a goalkeeper as big as martinez i mean he was probably quaking in his boots you know yeah which is something we don't see from australians but mm. he'll be a real good player for the future especially as a young player and i really look forward to seeing him develop yes yes and you know before we move along you know i just want to mention you know sjg watches for this lovely watch that i have here they have all the teams you know i'll put some information in the description below where you could find them they have portugal they have brazil and you know, if your team is still in there you know you can head on down and we'll uh, grab you one so i'll give you directions and then also we'll have some at smoky and bunties we'll probably bring a couple for you all to purchase they're very affordable i have mines in my hands right now uh because obviously i'm going to do a word count for how many times i would obviously I'm having fun with it, folks. I'm totally owning it right now. So feel free to check out these watches. You can take a quick look here. I'm wearing it. And, you know, James will probably get his Portugal. Uh, Kevin, which is your favorite? Well, you know, I'm a German. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not running from that fact. And, <laughs> and I, will still, I will still get my German, you know. Um, yes, yes. I think, you know, you don't ever give up on your, on your team. So oh, yes, I'll, t I'll still take my Germany. That's what we're talking about, folks. Loyalty there. Yeah, Loyalty. Yeah, so you don't back away from your team. So that's good. That, you have three loyal fans here. So, you know, check out the watches. So back to the game now we're going to head back to the argentina game we're going to swing back to that because we had to mention our watches i'm going to ooh, look at that so beautiful but anyway uh so the game has been done but there was a couple things we were speaking about martinez how important has this goalkeeper been for argentina you know for a while you know usually here this cliche that argentina's midfield up is very strong um, they usually have a strong defense, but every once in a while they have a keeper that does a dodgy thing every once in a while. The last World Cup we had Caballero, that disaster against Croatia. But Romero was pretty good, but Martinez seems to be that keeper that they were missing for a long time. That save at the end, 
is, you know, worth the three points because Australia could have just nicked it, then the game would have been complicated. What do you think of James? You know, I know you'd love to talk about this. What do you think about his performance? No, he's an absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. As I say, he has a great frame. He's a leader from the back. I yeah. mean, obviously, Messi's a captain, but he very much is leading the troops there from the back. I think he... Um, coming up against him would be so formidable because he is so big. But he's cocky, he's arrogant, and I think that's one of the things I kind of like about him, you know. Mm -hmm. They've had goalkeepers in the past, I think, Leo Fraca, different ones as well, you know. Mm -hmm. But he just gives something that they've never had, and he's technically good as well, you know. Good with his hands, and he's actually very good with his feet. I think he got caught once, mm -hmm. and one of the things I would say in this World Cup, players are pressing the goalkeeper, you know, very quickly. We've seen, we've seen it with um, Simone. We've seen it with um, the Portuguese goalkeeper. We've seen it even today with Martinez, but he seems to be able to handle the pressure yeah. and he can take that pressure off the team. I mean, what an asset he is to, to Argentina. Yes, yes. Well, I think um, Argentina, as you said, we, they had solid keepers maybe in the past, but they had this uh, loose screw, I call it, or this mm. uh, eccentricity, I think they call yeah. it, where, yeah. you know, they, they just kind of switch off and, yep. and do something crazy. I think that he has the South, the South American flair mm. and, and cockiness, as James said, but he doesn't have that, um, you know, I will try something that, yeah. that the, the previous goalkeepers have. And I think mm. I think you have seen the improvement in Argentina in their performances. And one thing I noticed is that Leo Messi was very close to him. Yeah. And that tells you a lot because, you know, he understands that this might just be the missing piece of the puzzle that Argentina was, was missing in 2014 and 2010 and all of these years and even 2018 yeah and um you never know because you know once you have confidence from your from your back go forward it gives you confidence as a, as a striker so we'll see yeah you mentioned something very interesting there kev about relationships on the field and this is something that i mean obviously we're experiencing the football game yeah relationships are so important so for example martinez is there Otto mendy's in front of him the relationship he has with messi so it's so important that players can play well together. They know each other. It's international football, so they're not playing with each other every week. Yeah. But they're able to learn and study how these players play, and it helps the team. And that's something that, even though these players play with different clubs, you can see playing for Argentina is important to them. Yeah. Correct. And they're able to bring that into their game. And as I say, it's working fantastically. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see this team go maybe all the way to the final yes yes uh, so you know i hope so i hope so so let's take a quick look at the stats obviously uh five shots for australia 14 for argentina five on target for argentina one for australia but the possession uh 61 possession for argentina versus 39 uh we've seen we mentioned this multiple times on the show james we've, we've seen teams dominate possession and lose in this particular case argentina won but it was a bit tricky of course um scaloni tried something which was a and i'll want your opinion on this so obviously when it was 2-0 he brought on martinez and switched to three at the back do you think that was a wise tactical decision what do you think was his reasoning for that well i think i'm um, coming out from halftime australia started to, to commit a little more uh, players forward to press the, yeah. the back line so they were committing i think three sometimes four yeah and i think he wanted that extra body there to help build up because he didn't want to to, to hoof the ball forward he wanted to build up so we all know that Lissandro is very good with his, with his feet mm. and very sturdy defender very strong so I think it was a wise decision it, it was able to free up their wide players a little bit more and that in turn will free up Messi in the half spaces um, but I think it was a very good decision um, because Australia were, were kind of really pressing them very very aggressively mm. so they had this extra free man now to, to probably just get the ball out to when the two Australia forwards press the, the Romero and Otamendi yeah. they have Martinez there who's comfortable going out wide and, and, and building from the back so I think that solidified them a bit because we saw Australia were, well, as I say, biting a bit. Mm. And I think, um, but credit to Australia, they adapted well to that uh, also. So, um, again, as Jim said, the tactical battle off the field is just as exciting as the technical battle on the field. Correct. Just to touch on what Kev said there, I think what it allowed was them to double up wide. So, for example, um, Australia were pushing players forward wide to try and get the goal, obviously. And then Argentina were able to get two players wide at times to obviously you know press to create opportunities and and it worked so unlike we, we were speaking about this off camera the portuguese coach for example makes substitutes and he's taken off key players in my opinion that at the time need to be on the field he didn't do that because at times we thought is he going to take off messi he left them you know and yes it's good to rest players but the result is so important especially in the round of 16 so it worked for him but at the end of the day i think tactically scaloni got it right today yeah. 
You know, um, Arnold, I think, has been a coach that's came into this tournament and, you know, I think he surprised us. He learned under the Dutch way, in a sense, and um, he's a good coach. Will he get the chance to continue with this Australia team? We will see, but kudos to Argentina and a good result. Yes, yes. So, obviously, Argentina will be playing Netherlands in the next game. It's another classic matchup with these two giants of football. The, the last time they faced each other yeah, at this stage, it ended in penalties. It was a very tight game. Argentina edged them. Romero had some great saves. Will it be the same this time around? We'll definitely have our preview of that in a couple of days. We have so many matches coming up, James. James, could you give us a little uh, insight about the games tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we have some big games again. I mean, we have the French, Le Bleu, playing against um, Poland. That will be our earlier game at 11 o'clock. Massive game. Can the Polish come up with something that, you know, we've not seen so far in the tournament? Can they press a team with that high pace, that, that running ability? You know, can they keep Mbappe quiet? And then later on we have the Three Lions England playing against Senegal. Very, very exciting game too. Senegal, they kind of they surprised us all, but definitely deserve to be here. Will they be able to keep Harry Kane, Phil Ford and all these guys quiet? We will see. Yes, and th the thing is, folks, you know, before we go on, Kevin, when you lose, you go home, folks. When you lose, you go home, you're taking a trip. And speaking about trips, James, we always have that prize that we keep talking about, James. Let's hear it. Well, all of our fans here that come down visit, visit us here at Smoking Bunties on the Avenue, we have flights for two to Tobago for two lucky guests. So come down here, get the chance to win it. We'll put you into a prize draw and on the final on the 18th, we will draw those two lucky winners from our friends at Ventures World Travel. It's a fantastic prize. We have so many other prizes as well. We have prizes from Stag, prizes from Angostura and so much more. Yes, yes. And obviously we had our first hamper giveaway today. So, you know, uh, we, we had our, we'll put it on Instagram as well so we can have a look at our lovely winner. But James, tell us about our winner today. Yes, our winner was none other than Kelvin Edwards. He's been one of our loyal fans. He's been here at every single game, well which done. is fantastic. And he got his prize, which we'll see just now. Yes, yes. So, Kevin, you know, we're going to go back to the football now. We know the game's tomorrow. Three Lions, how do you think it's going to go? We'll do, we'll do, we won't do a full preview, but just a quick thoughts on the matchups tomorrow. Um, England definitely, definitely have enough quality to, to, to win this game. I mean, that, that is uh, evident. But... Um, I think that Sa has been uh, a, a very adequate replacement for, for Mane. Maybe not all there with the quality, but the, the way he gets at you. Um, I think he plays, you know, of course, on the left hand side. We also know that um, England have very good right backs. Yeah. So it will be an interesting uh, pick to, to see who Southgate goes with, whether he goes with the more sturdy defensive type or if it is, you know, he goes, he takes the chance to go the more attacking right back and. and you know, take the risk of, of, of letting Sarah on free. But this Senegal side, um, I think they, they lack uh, all out nine, uh, you know, our traditional guy to put the ball at the ba in the back of the net. But you never know. You never know what England will turn up as well. We don't know which, which Harry Maguire will turn up. You don't know which Harry Kane will turn up. Um, but if if I have to, to, to guess, because this World Cup is all about guessing the way the football going, you can't, yeah, correct. You can't, you can't predict anything. I, I think England will have just about enough quality. It will be a close game again. But uh, I, I back England to, to just about nick it. Yeah, I agree with Kev. I mean, I think, sorry to say, I mean, I think it'll be a tough one for Senegal. But I think they do have the quality to do it because make no kind of mistakes, they deserve to be here. Mm. They have some pace going forward. So I fully expect them to, to push it to the wire. I would love to see some of these games go to extra time and penalties. I know England don't want that because, you know, they have a, a terrible record when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, we want entertaining football. And I think both of the games tomorrow we expect that from them. Yes, yes. So, folks, you know, let us know your predictions in the comment section below. Be sure to come down to Smokey and Bundy's and hang with us. We had a massive amount of people yesterday. It was hilarious. I'll put some of the bloopers up on uh, Instagram. We had some Manchester United fans kind of jumped in on us. You know, we had people dancing. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun and a lot of giveaways. But, Kevin, any final thoughts? Well, what I would say with the Poland game, I hope that they took some lessons from the, the Argentina game mm. where they really sit back and they, they, they didn't go at it and I hope they take some lessons from Australia today mm. where it, it's not all about sitting back sometimes you have to be brave they have great attacking players in Zelensky and Lewandowski and all of these players with all these names take a risk yeah. take a risk you never know if you go forward if you go forward and get an early goal how much pressure you could put on the France yes so and can, can Chesney continue his form because to me he's been the best goalkeeper in the tournament I mean on form in the tournament he's been fantastic Will he be able to keep out Mbappe and these guys? We will see, but it's going to be a great day of football. Come down and enjoy the games with us. Come and say hi, because it's very important. We want to hear if you're enjoying the World Cup as much as we are, because as Kev said, 
the best World Cup so far in my opinion. Yes, yes, and we have some fan reactions to the games, which we'll probably play a couple as well on Instagram, and then we'll probably add something in the next videos as well. We had some Argentinian fan reactions after the game. So we had a lot of people. We had a lot of people coming down. The interaction is great. We're absolutely loving it. So, you know, James, uh, we're going to end the show off the way we always do, with that lovely ending, James. Let's hear it. Well, after a wonderfully thrilling day of football, Make sure you continue to support us, comment us, and like us at the greatest show on earth. Yeah.